What it is, what it do, Gorilla Cruz, your boy Gorilla for here, and today I am doing my very first ever tips and tricks video for Death Garden for Hunter. Because I see a lot of people talking and saying that they feel Hunter is really weak, or some people saying Hunter is OP, or some people saying Hunter isn't fun, or talk about how they got bullies. Just a lot of stuff out there in the Death Garden community. And from what I've seen involving Hunter and how to play it, what to do, like what's going on, why do you make it look so easy, and so on and so forth. So I thought the best thing to do here would be to make a little tips and tricks video. I got like 10 points. I got on a little scrap piece of paper. I'm going to cover each point I want to speak on. I'm not going to go in too detail on each specific Hunter, as in that could be another video. But this is just like if you're playing Hunter, um, these are just general things to keep in mind and to do. To hopefully make your hunter experience a much better one. Um, so, without further ado, let's get into it. Tip number one: aiming and tracking. I mean, you don't have to have like some godlike aim, but you have to have like a little bit. Um, a lot of that might come from you know your sensitivity. So you might want to get a sensitivity that you're, you're comfortable with, not too fast, not too slow, and a sensitivity good enough so you can track because uh, runners are slippery, 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 slippery. They do a lot of evading, a lot of rolling, a lot of jumping, and you got to be able to track them down while they're doing that. Um, so if you keep that in mind, that'll help you out. And this also ties into tip number two, which is your melee attack, your shock, your Q, whatever you want to call it, however you want to title it, it doesn't really matter. But the moment when you make electricity come out of your hand as if you are a god, that is very important. It is important for each Hunter has a different way to use it. Uh, Poacher has a bigger range. Um, Stalker does more damage with hers. And Inquisitor just, just has it. Doesn't really matter. But um, the things you can do with that are pretty cool. Is if you're in a chase, you can literally just run someone down. Um, be shooting them. Shock them. Switch to your shotgun to get a shot off. If you already have your shotgun out, you can shotgun them. Shock them and then shotgun them again. That can usually equal a down with uh, Poacher. Um... You know, Stalker doesn't have a shotgun and sniping up close is bad. So you can't really, before in old DG, you could, you know, technically, you know, shock someone in point blank range, snipe them. It would be pretty cool. Not anymore. Um, but that's just a great way to use the melee because it does do a little bit of damage on Poacher and Inquisitor. Um, and on Stalker, she does have an ability that ups the damage. But overall, it just does a little bit of damage. But it's more the stun that you want than anything because. That's a runner that's not moving, which gives you time to aim and do uh, maximum damage in that one, maybe two seconds that you get while they're stunned. It's also a great tool for fighting people. And if characters, are, if runners are trying to run up the wall, if you shock them, they'll fall all the way back down to the ground. Um, also, if you shock them, if they're hanging off the map, they'll fall off the map because they are stunned and they can't. I guess in a sense, re-grab. So that's something to keep in mind as well when using the melee, shock, or Q, whichever one you want to call it. Also, runner knowledge. Now, you don't have to play runner. I'm not saying, hey, look, go play runner and get good at it. But you don't have to be knowledgeable of what runners can do. That will be tip number three. So when I mean runner knowledge, it's like, okay, if I'm chasing this runner, and literally they're dodge rolling and they're not taking any damage or they're not taking as much damage what's going on well they could have a unique ability to them that allows them to when evading to take less damage or if it's uh, i believe saw bones for example um who just takes less damage in general um you should be aware of that so when you're chasing the saw bones you know hey look this character is going to take less damage um or whether it be your construct your drones or your turrets are being destroyed faster, you should probably know, all right, well, this character might be on the map because they do X and Y. I normally know my drone shouldn't go down as fast, so either multiple runners are shooting it or one runner shooting and destroying it quickly, and that can be a unique uh, ability to a runner. Or if you just down somebody and they take off and you can't find them, well, then maybe they crawl faster. Or they don't bleed out fast enough. Well, maybe they have an ability that doesn't allow them to bleed out as fast. These are little things that, uh, as a hunter, I feel you should know when you enter a chase. So you know and can prepare yourself uh, for the chase. So if someone dodge rolls four times when they're only supposed to dodge roll three times. Or if they'll be out of stamina and they dodge roll four times. Well, then you know, all right, well, this character has a unique 
bonus that allows them an extra dodge roll. I should keep that in mind before I try to shock and melee. I mean, before I try to shock and shoot them because they have an extra roll. So I should, you know, prepare for that, get closer, let them expend their stamina, do their four rolls if they have that uh, unique ability or unique perk, excuse me. So that way I can run them down the run in straight line shock and melt them away. It's always good to pay attention to that. The stamina of runners, what they can do. And just, like I said, in general, have a knowledge. Not necessarily from playing, but just know, all right, this is what you're capable of, and this is how I can counterplay what you're capable of. And it's pretty easy to get. All you have to do is literally go to the runners, look at the unique perks, look at some of their bonuses, things of this nature. It's right there. Now, you might not know at max level um, what it can do, but to know what it does on a base level will give you a general sense of what you should worry about and what you should think about. All right, let's go into tip number five, which, oh, nope, sorry. No, sorry, tip number four. Sorry, terrible with this. Edit that out, probably not, too lazy. Tip number four is cloak knowledge and fog. How that works, well, smoke. We won't say fog, because that's a character. We'll just say smoke. So, cloak knowledge, cloak knowledge. I know I hear a lot of people talk about it. It's a highly debated topic. OPs, not fair, so on and so forth. What you need to know about it is, it's plain and simple, if you hit the target while they're cloaked, they get a health bar over the head and they have a black aura around them so you can still see their outline. Let's say you don't hit the target, but you do reveal the target. Well, same applies, they get the black outline, no health bar, so you have to kind of be on the lookout for it to see it. How can I outplay a gorilla? Well. Pay attention, listen for sounds, listen for visual cues. It is an arrow, so there is a little blue spark when it goes on. And then when it goes off, you also, if you're looking in bushes, um, you can see that. Also, look, grass just doesn't move because it wants to move. That's not how grass works. So usually you see grass move, just shoot it. I mean, who cares? You got plenty of ammo on the map. Just shoot it, see what happens. If a health bar pops up, hey, you did good. If one doesn't, well, get him next time, champ. Also, you're shocked. That counts as damage as well. If you think that a runner's close, or if he coked and once you land on him, use your shock to get that immediate shock, immediate reveal. Well, not reveal, but outline on him, health bar above him, and then you have to stay on him. That's where the aiming and the tracking comes into play, which is staying on him. If we're in the end game, someone cloaks, they're running away from you. Um, whenever the drone pops, it reveals them. So they do have the outline on them. Now you can't see them because they're revealed, but they do have the black aura over the, their character. So if you get a general direction, whether it's the left door or the right door, if you can get to the door first and have a heading of which way they're coming from, you can see them because they are going to be revealed because it is in the blood mode. So it will be revealed to you and you can do damage in, then you'll get the health bar. But you will be able to see the black outline during the entire blood mode each time the drone goes out to reveal where they are on the map. Because that's kind of how they want to balance the counterplay of Cloak. Cloak is still really strong, but it is not like unbeatable. You just have to know what you can and can't do as a hunter to counter Cloak. Smoke. Smoke isn't as strong as Cloak. It's still really good in my opinion. So the way smoke works, um, if you don't know, you, you pretty much drop a smoke bomb out of your, your wrist. And um, some of the pluses on it are if you're revealed and you're a runner and you shoot smoke, you get unrevealed. That's how it works. But as a hunter, you should keep in mind they're unrevealed on the original reveal. So if they get revealed, they pop their smoke, they become invisible. Now, if you have a drone in that area or if it's blood mode, it will re-re-re-reveal re, re them. Good Lord, what is that? Those are words. Um, so keep that in mind. Like this smoke is not like some permanent you'll never see them again. It literally gives them a one of blank and then if they don't sit in the smoke or if they time it perfectly, they can pop another smoke to kind of eliminate the reveal but it's not a complete blanket you will never see the red outline it is a quick instant reveal i mean a quick instant block of a reveal um but it kind of gives you a direction um when playing hunter i feel it's important to understand you literally just looking to get in their vicinity and then you just gotta let your ears and eyes do the rest of the work and then let your wrist do the aim and finish it off. So those are good ways to play around cloak and to play around smoke, just knowing how they work. N tip number five, hacking. Some people think it's not important, some people think it is. I personally think hacking is hell of important. Why? Because it gives you a general idea of where people are. Hacking works really strong on Inquisitor. Why is that? Well, Inquisitor has a perk 
that allows when you are revealed from a crate that has been hacked, you are revealed longer, which is good if you're a hunter because now you can find them easier. And I figured, hey, if you're there, why not just hack it? I mean, it's literally a couple bullets. It doesn't take too long. Just do it because you're there. You'll never miss that ammo. Comes in handy. I literally hack almost everything except for health crates because normally once I find you, I'm going to down you. And if I down you, I'll just hack any health crates in the area. Um, but I just verbatim, I've played games where I haven't hacked it all. I've played games where I've hacked everything. Hacking comes in very handy. So keep that in mind. Another tip, tip number six. Let's talk about managing your stamina. I mean, well, supercharge, which supercharge eats your stamina. So it kind of works the same. Supercharge is a great way for you to jump around on the map like a madman. Find runners as soon as possible. Get on them, start putting in work. Um, but you do have to manage it. I see a lot of people when I watch other people play hunters. They're running around with the supercharge. They find a runner and they literally have the most potatoes of aim I've ever seen in my life. And I think a lot of the time is because they're trying to aim while in supercharge mode, which kind of you know, gives you a movement speed, bonus, and everything else. So aiming, moving that fast may prove to be difficult if you master it, cool. If it is difficult for you, just remember to turn off your supercharge. Also, also remember, if you don't get him and you run out of supercharge and he gets away, well then now you don't have supercharge to run him down. So managing in it is very, what, what are these words I'm coming up with today? They're beautiful. So managing your supercharge meter is really important um, on two out of the three hunters. Um, Inquisitor kind of nullifies that by one of his unique bonuses. Um, but never hurts to just keep that in mind when you're in middle chase. Tip number seven. I find this tip uh, very important because this tip is what you need in game when it's two people they decide to hide in bushes. That is dropping drones. Drone, 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 and drone some more. Drone till you can't drone no more. The reason I like drones is just because it's an area, it just, you know, reveals an area. It makes runners move. Um, and if they're not paying attention or if you're pressing them, they might move into a reveal from another drone or they'll destroy your drone and gives you kind of a general idea of where they are, which allows you to find them faster and jump on top of them. So I'm always one, you know, I'm always down to drop drones. I drop drones all throughout the game all the time, all the time. Like even when I jump into the garden, the first thing I do is pretty much find an ammo crate and an upgrade box and drop a drone. Uh, near one of the points just to try to either eliminate the point or to see if someone tries to shoot it. Um, plus, it gives them less things to do because they high level runners do know how to use the drones as a way to evade with the smoke that they release whenever drone is destroyed. So you have to keep that in mind as a hunter as well. So drone a lot. Uh, number eight, your abilities. Keep in mind what abilities you have. Keep in mind what they do. Um, there's nothing wrong with just, you know, autopilot because you're grinding, but if you're sitting there getting stomped and you're looking like, oh, I had the worst two abilities in, on in the world. They had nothing to do with each other. They had no synergy whatsoever. Huh, now I know I got curb stomp. So you might want to keep in mind what abilities you're running on that hunter when you go into a game. And if you can fit, pick out abilities that have synergy, they can work together. That would also be very beneficial to you getting a job done, which is pretty much just to get a 5K. 4Ks are acceptable, but 5Ks are really winning. So keep in mind your abilities. Number nine, your challenges. I don't feel you should really worry about challenges in the beginning because some challenges are a bit out of the way. But when you do get to a point where you're comfortable with Hunter, now you can start worrying about your challenges because getting some of those challenges and winning a game proves difficult, but also proves it also is a is a way to gauge improvement. If you can go hack 51 health crates and still kill five people in a timely manner, or at least enter blood mode in a, in a 1v1 situation, it's still pretty good, because normally, you know, when you play the game, you don't even touch health crates at all. So doing challenges helps you, in a sense, gauge where you are to where if you can do an obscure challenge and still get the job done. It means you're getting a nice handle on the game, game sense, pressure, so on and so forth. So. Kudos to you. So doing challenges, not the biggest priority in the beginning, but a necessary evil if it's not too obscure. But doing obscure challenges shows the improvements you've made as a hunter, and I'm proud to see you in the garden slaying. 
And tip number 10 is probably the most obvious tip of them all, but look up. Why? Why do you look up? Well, because if the sky's red, that means someone's turning blood. If the sky's not red, that means everything's fine. So you might want to occasionally look up. You know, I know you get focused in the game. You get focused on the chase. Sometimes you get focused on looting stuff and doing challenges. But you will soon lose track of the game and lose track on the importance because you forgot to look up at the sky and all of a sudden they've gotten 60% of the blood collected. And you're like, what? And they're like, yeah, you were sleeping at the wheel and we got you, bitch. So be sure to look up from time to time just to check because not all maps have like the greatest clearing to look to the heavens. Um, but for the maps that do, it makes it a lot easier. But for the maps that don't, you kind of lose track of it because you are doing other things. So be sure to sometimes look up at the sky, make sure it's not going red. And if it is going red, see if you can find where they're turning in blood and jump on top of the runners and uh, do what you do. Scooby Doo. So. This is my first ever tips and tricks video. If you have anything you want to add as far as Hunter tips, um, be sure to uh, drop it down in the comments below for anybody that's playing Hunter. Um, you can read them, take from it, you know, make of what you will. Did this include everything? Probably not. There's probably other little things that some people think that should be known and I didn't speak on. If you think so, put it down in the comment section below. Help another Hunter out. Um, we need more Hunters to help the queue times for the runners. And to keep the game going strong and alive. They have a new patch dropping Thursday. I'm super excited for it. We'll see what it brings. I know of at least a new map. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, thank you guys so very much for checking out the video. If you want more Death Garden content, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And as always, peace to you. Later.